Hello guys, in this video we'll talk about LiveWire 4 Beta. It was revealed in summer during Laracon US by Caleb and then released the beta version during WireLife event just a few weeks ago. In this video I will try to recap what you need to know, what are the changes, what are the new features, what is the upgrade process and we'll try to upgrade one of the projects from LiveWire 3 to LiveWire 4. So short practical recap, but I will put the links to both of those videos in the description below. You should watch them in full for the full context. The word of warning, it's still a beta version in the docs. It's clearly marked on top. So things might still change before the official release. So this video is kind of a short teaser of what's to come, but I will have more in-depth videos when LiveWire 4 is officially released and probably will update the courses on Laravel daily as well. But in this video, we'll talk about three ways how to structure LiveWire components in v4, new features to improve reactivity user experience and overall speed with LiveWire. Also, we'll try to upgrade LiveWire 3 to LiveWire 4 project. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about Laravel Blade, which may change in the future because of LiveWire. So let's start with how you would generate components in LiveWire 4. And now we have three ways. So in LiveWire 3, there was make LiveWire with classes and also there was vault way. In LiveWire 4, the first way mentioned in the docs is this, make LiveWire post create. And if you don't add any other flags, it generates so-called single file component. So if we run exactly that in the terminal, look what happens. We have one file generated without any class and it is in resources, views, components, post, create blade, but with flash emoji as a prefix. That flash emoji means that it's a live wire component. So instead of having resources views live wire, it's all in the components and that flash emoji is for differentiation of this as live wire. And then inside you have everything in one file. So if I understand correctly, this replaces vault or in other words, vault becomes the first option. So this is the single file component. Another option to generate components is multi-file components. So if we scroll down the docs, we have this flag. If we run that with dash dash MFC, look what happens then. Again, resources, views, components, but now we have folder and subfolder. Again, with flash emoji as a prefix, but it is customizable. You can configure it to not generate that prefix. And then we have separate blade file and create PHP class, but they are co-located in the same resources views components. So in other words, the whole idea for LiveWire is to live in resources views components and not in the app LiveWire folder but you can still do the old way. It's fully supported in LiveWire 4. It's just kind of hidden lower, much lower in the docs. You have to scroll way, way down and here you have class-based components. So nothing really is deprecated or taken away. You can still generate the same old LiveWire, just add dash dash class. So if I run that in the terminal, then it would generate a typical resources views live wire, create post blade like this, and then separate class in app live wire, create post. So good old live wire three still available in live wire four. So this is kind of the main change of live wire four. You need to kind of prepare yourself for, you would need to either adopt the new structure or add dash dash class to keep the old one. And now let's move from the components to two new features, which I think are very important in LiveWire 4 for better user experience. I'm talking about islands and deferred rendering. So imagine you have a web page with quite a few LiveWire components, but some of them are slower to, for example, get more data or perform some eloquent queries in the background. And yes, now you can actually put them into the background separately, defining the component to be reloaded without the full page reload, which was the main problem for performance in LiveWire 3. So whenever something is reloaded, basically, usually full page is reloaded. Now look at this example. If I refresh the page, I've put sleep directly in the code. So this loads first then another should load in a few seconds, this one and that one. And now if I click refresh chart, 
only this chart is refreshed because it's an island. Let me show you the code. So this is the dashboard blade component, single file component, and inside we have three live wire components. So chart, revenue, and expenses. Those are all single file components. This is where flash emoji is visible and probably more useful to differentiate from button blade. And for example, revenue blade and the mount I've put sleep for three seconds. And this is the thing, new defer class. What it does, if we look at the docs, the basic usage is something like this. And then this is the main thing. The component initially renders as empty div and then loads immediately after page finishes loading. So as you can see, the full page is loaded before the revenue is rendered with numbers. Similar thing, expenses blade, sleep two, new defer class. There may be also placeholder for empty state and you saw a minute ago how it works visually. Now with this Livewire Island, if we go to revenue chart, which is also a single file component, but also we have sleep four and we have the chart here and this is the main thing. Island with placeholder, with div, with some Alpine JS inside. This is not that relevant. This is for the chart. And then we have button with wire click refresh. And in Livewire 4, as you saw already, refresh chart would refresh only that part of the page, only that component, that island. So those two new features are great additions to Livewire 4. Those impressed me the most because I saw many people struggling with performance of Livewire page if you have a lot of Livewire components on the same page. Now the user experience may be much better, much more reactive, similar or close to JavaScript reactivity. And now let's try the upgrade guide. Let's try to upgrade Livewire 3 version starter kit. This is the default Laravel starter kit, the Livewire version. Let's try the upgrade. Will it work from the first time? And the upgrade guide clearly says with exclamation mark that Livewire 4 is currently in beta. So be careful using that, but you can still try it out. And I will show you what to be cautious about. So Composer require. And then it is successful. And what do we need to do? Config clear and view clear just in case, but probably it will not make huge difference in this case. And then you should go through high impact changes and other changes. But I will demonstrate that if we go to dashboard, we refresh and it works. But if we go to profile of settings, this is where we get the error with layouts. And this is where you need to read the upgrade guide or the V4 documentation layout configuration changed a little. So there is layout and component layout, which is by default layouts app. The default Livewire 3 starter kit with Laravel 12 implies that there's resources, views, components, layouts, app, blade. This is the main layout, which was the default and still is default in Livewire 3. But in Livewire 4, the default is different. So you either need to move your layout in this location or you need to publish the config, which I, to be honest, rarely did in Livewire 3 because it was always the default. So there was basically nothing to change. But if you're upgrading to Livewire 4, you should run PHP Artisan Livewire Publish config and then in the config of Livewire, there are a few things you need to change. So component layout by default layouts app, which you may change here or component namespaces layouts. This is another place to change that you should change that to resources views components layouts, which is in Livewire starter kit at the moment. And now if I refresh the page, it all starts working with other pages as well. This is, of course, if you use Livewire components as full page components with layouts. And in general, I do recommend, as always, with upgrading any framework, any version to read the full upgrade guide because you may find a few things which are important for your specific projects. But generally, it seems like layouts become also kind of first party citizens because in the installation of Livewire 4, after Composer Require, the next thing recommended is to create a layout file. So probably what Caleb recommends and what becomes 
kind of the preferred way to use Livewire is full page components with layouts. In Livewire 3, for example, in the installation you have only Compose Require, only Livewire Publish, so nothing about layouts specifically yet. And the topic of layouts is touched mostly in the full page components section, which is much later in the docs. So here for full page components, also same live wire layout and the settings, but I think the change of that to the first part of the docs is pretty significant and kind of embodies the vision of how Caleb imagines how people should use live wire. This is my interpretation personally. And the final thing I want to mention in this video is Laravel Blade, which is discussed quite a lot in the podcast by Ian Lansman and Aaron Francis. Ian attended that wirelife conference so here at the 10th minute mark they discuss how new package blaze may change the way how laravel blade is rendered in general in this case by caleb it's done for live wire and i haven't found blaze in action in anywhere in the docs except for interview with caleb on laravel blog which mentions that Blaze compiler makes Blade components render 20 times faster. And he showed that on stage of Laracon US, so I do recommend you to watch the full video. And also I found one Medium article mentioning the times of initial load time, which is much faster. But we'll see, and I will test it when Livewire 4 comes out. But basically the idea is that if you have a lot of Blade components on the same page, which may happen with Livewire, then Blaze compiler would work with Blade to be much more efficient. And this is why I mentioned that podcast by Ian and Aaron, mostly technical, because they discuss, they predict that Blaze may become or should become in the future first party citizen inside of Laravel. Because kind of this is how Blade should work by default, because the same problem was with Filament actually, where Dan Harren needed to change how Blade files work inside of Filament to render the tables with a lot of rows, so he worked on optimization kind of around the current Blade implementation. So the problem is real, and and maybe we will see changes in the future for that, not only within Livewire 4, but also with Laravel itself. We'll see. And actually, I need to correct myself. While talking to you, I noticed that the Blaze is linked here. So I googled and didn't find it, but here the link is to Livewire Blaze, which is pre-compiled Blade components, and you can read more about that on github i will link that in the description below so yeah these are kind of the main things i wanted to show and the main question remains when so when livewire 4 will be officially released and out of beta unfortunately i don't have the answer i haven't found anywhere where caleb mentioned any date but what i do know for sure is that he's working on it pretty actively because for example, in current version four docs, some things don't load well yet. For example, if you go to layout, currently at the time of shooting this video, it throws server error, but maybe by the time this video is published, that error would be fixed. Because if we take a look on GitHub for the same layout page corresponding to the documentation, there was a commit related to that page just 18 hours ago. So the work is very much in progress and I hope we see Livewire 4 out of beta still in 2025. And actually I personally care about the release date because I had an idea. So we have livewirekit.com, pretty old Livewire set of components, version three and version four. So I was thinking to recreate those components with Livewire 4 for Black Friday and even include that into the mix of deals. But I think while it's still in beta, it's a bit too early. So I will be waiting for the beta tag to be dropped and then Livewire Kit will be updated to v4, probably with single page components, but I'm not sure yet which way will I go. But of course I will inform you on this channel. So subscribe to Laravel Daily YouTube channel for all the news about Livewire 4 out of beta and Livewire Kit upgraded and anything related to Livewire. I'm a big fan and I will follow the news pretty closely. But for now, what do you think about Livewire 4 beta? Do you like new features? Do you like the changes? Which way of creating components you will choose in the future? Let's discuss all of that in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.